welcome to Fluent Friday. Yes, it's another Fluent Friday with me, Kirsten, from fluentlanguage.co.uk. Every Friday, or as many Fridays as I can make, at 2pm, I meet you up here in the Fluent Attic. And today, I've got a great topic. It'll really help you kind of get organised and probably make sense of your resources in language learning. There's a reason I've got this massive pile of... Um, resources next to me um, and I'm kind of bringing it into shot so that you can see it a little bit more so I'm kind of going to be a little bit over here in this video today and the reason for this is that I want to talk you through um, a few of my favorites really so I'm going to be reaching back here um, at various points during the video and I also want to talk to you about what you can do to choose better language resources now before I start my apologies I'm just going to bring you down a little bit so that you can see better and I don't have so much space ahead of me. Okay, now in today's class we are going to talk about all of these. I'm about to move house so today I think is going to be the last Facebook Live that we are going to conduct in the fluent attic so you know say goodbye to this background i don't know what it's going to be like in the new house but i'm moving house in two weeks and i'm pretty sure the panic stations are only going to include increase and all of these gorgeous things are going into a big box so today i want to talk you through my favorite language learning resources or at least a few of them and i want to talk to you about the different types of resources that you should have when you're teaching yourself a language that are extremely helpful. Uh, it's, it's all too often that I find language learners think that just having one specific type of resource or doing one specific thing like moving to the country or having language exchanges um, is, is the whole story and the reality is the reality is it really is not. There is just so much more to the story and I was looking at language, language learning resources this week and I really thought about how can I break down for you what I think you need as a language learner and I think you need something out of these four categories. I've kind of put them here and I'm going to be posting that as well as a blog article so you'll be seeing it. You can kind of um, download the PDF. I'll kind of put it all into a manageable manageable format so you really know what it is that you're doing because I think this is important. There are four types of categories and I'm going to be talking you through all four of those at any point in the video. If you've got a question, if you want to share what you use, you know, just leave a, leave a comment down there, say hello. It's nice to know you're watching. Okay, now we're going to start with what I call a guiding resource. And excuse me while I balance all my devices here. So I'm going to show you what I mean by a guiding resource with the examples of the following two books. Um, this is an Asimil book and this is a teach yourself book. The particular teach yourself course, you can see here it's a teach yourself book. This particular teach yourself course was made by Benny Lewis um, in collaboration with teach yourself. And what both of these have in common is they actually belong to the same family as, um, I've got another one down there, so allow me to just reach for this. This is not a well prepared video, I'm going to see the fall of everything aren't we? This, Façon de Paris. So all of these videos have got, all of these resources have got something in common and that is they are, well these are all aimed at beginners. But you don't have to have all of these aimed at beginners. These are all what I call guiding resources. So in order to have a guiding resource, it must fulfill the following criteria. Number one, the resource must be well structured. So you don't really want to, just something that throws a lot of information at you. You need to be able to look through it. And ideally you want it to be structured into something like units, lessons, steps, etc. You know, it has to follow a structure. Number two, you should have lessons so that you can move on from bit to bit to bit. So by the example of, let's take, let's take the language hacking book, which I think is, is very nicely structured, really good. Um, you will also, before you spend money on these, you can always see this in the content directory. You know, no matter what course, no matter what resource you're looking at, the curriculum is your first stop. So in Benny's book, you can see 
there are different units and they tell you what it is that you're going to learn, talking about yourself, asking about other people, talk about family, describing stuff. Um, and that is really, really important. You need to know all of this. You need to have lessons from so that you can move on from one to the next. You know, ideally what you're looking for in a guiding resource is a curriculum. Um, these, this category to me contains sort of all-in-one textbooks and resources. So some of the textbooks, bear in mind something like Façon de Parler, which is this one, yeah. These are designed for group classes um, and very often that's what you'll be able to, to purchase. That doesn't make it a bad resource, but the way they are written is usually that a lot of the exercises are not designed for you to do them by yourself, but instead they'll say something like, find a partner in your group and then practice these sentences with them. Or something like, you know, in the group have a discussion of this image, they ask your teacher this, etc. They just assume you're in a group class and that is not always the right thing. However, uh, textbooks written for group classes are the, the most common existing range so I don't think they're you know if, if, if it's that or nothing they're, they're, they're not a terrible thing to get but yeah things like language hacking things like an ASML um, they should all have this now the final thing for your guiding resource is it should have pretty much multimedia you know you kind of want more than just a book you want the book to be you want the book unit to be accompanied by a little bit of audio perhaps a worksheet perhaps there's some video resources they don't necessarily have to be books either you can get courses that have just got pdf support um, for welsh i followed um, a really cool course called the big welsh challenge which was a video course the, a free video course that you can access, it's sort of archived on the BBC website um, and it just has all these little videos, so you know, you watch the video um, very often they lead in with the audio, you hear the dialogues, that's how Asimil works as well um, and then from those dialogues you have a little bit of an explainer of what the, what the unit is covering and then there are a few exercises that's how the BBC course worked as well, which led with video these books lead with typing or writing or something like Say Something in Welsh, which I've followed really successfully, leads with the audio. But I think there always needs to be the writing. You want to see the words you're saying and you just want to, or if you're reading something, you want to be doing exercises. So a guiding resource is the first thing you need. Um, if you've got one at the moment, if you're following a textbook, or you're following a specific course in your target language, you know, comment and let me know what you're following. That would be really interesting. So what's your guiding resource? Number two supplementary resources supplementary resources are what i think language learners who are teaching themselves find most easily because the internet is full of supplementary resources so these have to be they don't have to be structured because you get your structure covered by your guiding resource usually so they have to be at the right level for you so that means they have to be understandable but not too easy and not too hard. You know, there needs to be a little bit of a sense that you're learning as you're following it, a little bit of a challenge, but at the same time, you don't want them to be so easy that you know exactly what's coming. Like I've got a student who sometimes goes back through Michel Thomas courses that he did from the start, Michel Thomas, a guiding resource, and um, he says, he says, oh, I know, I know what's coming. This is, you know, this is pretty straightforward. And that is, a good resource but you know it's not the challenge that I kind of would want him to have at any point so that's not what you're looking for in a supplementary resource also supplementary resources have to be enjoyable they have to be fun right because if you don't enjoy them then you don't do them and finally you really kind of want to go crazy with these you can have as many as you want you never have too many supplementary resources because the idea with that kind of resource is really that you can drop it and just follow you know get back to it weeks later they can be written they can be video they can be audio most youtube videos in your target language are going to fall into this music falls into this tv shows you know supplementary resources are necessary you need them because that's where you get the natural input but at the same time they're not how would i say it they're not guiding you you know they sort of if you're not careful you always just stay at the same level um, and they often 
if people just follow supplementary resources, something I've noticed is that you, you start getting the feeling you're not getting anywhere, even if you are. So they just don't make you feel as organized. Um, a great supplementary resource that I really love is Language Learners Magazines. I've shown you this several times before. The one I follow is in Welsh. Oops, what have I done now with the light? Um, it's called Lingua, ne Lingua Newydd. Lingua Newydd. Um, has little articles in Welsh. Uh, there's, there's no audio for this, but for audio I watch a show on my iPad. I'll show you that as well. It's called... Oh, this is I Read the Weather. Um, so it's just little bits like that. Or the show I watch is called Borada. That's, this is the Facebook page for it. Um, so Borada, again, a show for language learners. The idea really is that your language comes alive with a supplementary resource, whereas the guiding resources can feel a little bit restrictive and boring, but a supplementary resource, that's where you're supposed to have fun. Now, point number three, and I have a lot of this here, because this is the stuff that I tend to keep. You know, if I have a textbook, if I have something like a language magazine, um, I don't really keep those around, but what I have here, starting with that massive, massive dictionary, these are what I call reference resources. And reference resources are things like dictionaries, um, conjugation tables, so this is a whole book of French conjugations for regular and irregular verbs, um, vocab finders, so this is a book called Words and Context, Moral e Context, um, and I wanted to show you that some of them do a really cool crossover. So this is a book called Modern Welsh Grammar, which is quite good. You know, it's just a massive director. So if I have a question of why does the Welsh sentence could in this, this is where I can look it up. But I found this frustrating because it doesn't guide me enough. So something that um, my exchange partner Gareth recently made me aware of is that there is this, which is an intermediate Welsh grammar. Um, and it's, as you can see, it's structured into units. So even though this is just a grammar course, it kind of crosses over into a guiding resource. It's half reference, half guide. And I'm really looking forward to, to using this and kind of working through a little bit more. Now, um, re reference resources. So like we said, grammar books, dictionaries. Um, these don't have to just be books. You know, you kind of want to find all the stuff that you can, or you kind of want to use all the stuff that you can find. Phrase books, I would see, I would say, fall into this one as well. But they have to, they have to, for me, they have to fulfill two criteria to be good reference resources. Number one, they have to be accessible. And I don't mean like you can. Obviously, they have to be there for you to touch or open digitally. But more importantly, they have to be easy to understand. And with grammar books, what I've found is that this one. I don't always get it the first time I read it, but I don't really love that. I want my resources to be written in a way that I can understand. So something like the Becherel with verb table is way easier to understand because it has more examples, it is better laid out. Um, so accessible to me is important and I actually have a digital grammar resource that to me is preferable than this grammar book. Um, and secondly, they have to be accessible in the sense that you should have them around and they should really be there when you want them because the whole idea of a reference resource is you don't follow them as a course, you know, like you don't, I mean, nobody ever learned a language by reading a dictionary, I hope. Uh, so you don't, they, oh, I mean, no. Um, you don't follow them as a course, but instead what you do is that you just have them around for when you have a question. So they're really important that you have these on hand. And at the start of language learning, I think reference resources are a thing that you need to just answer to yourself, where am I going to look this up? Finding a good online or offline dictionary is super helpful. Finding a good grammar resource is extremely helpful. Um, and thirdly, depending on what language you're learning, finding a good pronunciation guide is really, really helpful. Um, and like I said, like I really love this one because it's uh, it has tests. Um, another thing here in this re in the reference in the reference resources area is um, test prep kits. So if you can 
download like the A1 Goethe certificate in German or the Delhi Spanish test. You kind of Google around. Usually the test providers for these websites have got kits either for examiners or kits for the learners um, to give you a sense of what to expect and very often you can get a mock exam. So download those mock exams. I think they're awesome references in the sense of telling you what level you're at and whether you have kind of checked off everything that goes with that level. So those are really great as well. Is there anything else that goes in here? Oh, final point, video courses. If you've got a video course, like I have created video courses on pronunciation and on grammar, which also they cross over between guiding and reference resources. So my dream for my German grammar course is that somebody follows it, gains a lot from it first time, but knows that they can come back and watch every video individually. Um, and it doesn't lead on to each other in the way that um, a textbook does. So that kind of I, that's the idea. So you're really thinking about what the user is going to do with that course when you're making it. And my course is in French grammar, German grammar, and German pronunciation. And you can get them all at school.fluentlanguage.co.uk if you're interested. Um, all of those courses are designed so that you can kind of leave off and just jump back in whenever you want to. Now, final set of resources, and then I'll kind of get to the comments, because, hi Stephen, thanks a lot for joining, and nice to hear from you, always nice to hear from you. Final set of resources, again, something that you often forget, or you sort of cobble together as a self-teacher, are the sort of self-teacher's resources. And if you're watching this video, you're watching this as a self-teacher's resource, and these kind of follow two purposes and I think they are so important purposes that they, they really are um, so if it's whether it's a online polyglotty type person like I am or whether it is something specific to your language like Catherine Wentworth's blog um, a woman learning Thai that's kind of or women learning Thai sorry Catherine um, those kind of resources are really really important and they are great so video courses, things like my course Focus and Fluency or um, courses like Language Learning Foundation, Successful Self-Study, uh, Fluent in Three Months Plus, so you, there's a really large range. They follow two purposes. Number one, they keep you motivated and accountable, which is something that you don't always have and that I know a lot of self-teachers struggle with, because I do and we all do. Um, and number two, they help you adapt, you know, good study techniques and good um, even good academic research into how to study, best practice study to your personal life. You know, they really help you out. Um, then secondly, there is the language oops, learning notebook. And I think this is something every self-teacher should have. Excuse me, I'm in a dusty room. Um, and that is this or something like this. I use a moleskin for this. Uh, language notebooks are where you can write your own vocab, you can write your own grammar rules, you can make your notes as pretty as you want them to be, you can make your notes as individual as you want them to be, you can repeat things. I have literally written mutation rules in Welsh about five times in this book now. This is not a textbook, this follows how you learn. This is where you make notes as you are doing your language exchange. This is where you note your vocab. This is where you write down anything that is interesting. This is where you do things like, I am writing a sentence about my week. You just, whatever you want to practice, I think it's so, so, so important that you have somewhere like this. Um, and if you are so inclined and if you're following the language habit toolkit, which is, to me, I follow it all the time because I made it, but not just because I made it, but also I made it because that's the technique that works for me. Um, language Habit Toolkit, the idea is really you can print it out and paste it in your notebook. Um, and you kind of want this structure somewhere as a self-teacher. You want to check in with yourself. You want to make notes of what you used, what you did, you know, like, did I do something today? What did I do today? You kind of want to keep accountable to yourself and without a notebook or a digital version of it. Um, I prefer offline very, very much. Uh, without a notebook, I don't think you, you, you can really, you, it's, it, you can still learn a language, of course. I mean, you can learn a language without a textbook, I know this. But if you don't have a self-teacher's resource, 
a reference resource, a guiding resource and a supplementary resource. If you don't have those four, it's really easy to feel lost. It's really, really easy to miss things out. It's really easy to teach yourself something and think you're better than you are or think you're worse than you are. This is the way that I think you can keep track of everything you're doing. And that is essentially what I've got for you today. So just once again, as a recap, guiding resources, you want to you want these to be structured supplementary resources you want these to be fun and rough roughly right for your level reference resources you want them to be there and easy to understand and your self-teaching resources <laughs> your self-teaching resources um, you can be a little bit more free of them I haven't really got any rules but I think they need to motivate you and they need to make you feel organized and those are the four types of resources that I recommend and that I would not touch a language really <laughs> without um, otherwise I feel really unorganized if you want um, recommendations for a resource in your target language and you're kind of lacking something please give me a shout 